What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So in this video we're talking about 10 very specific fragrances for spring. These I would consider to be some secret weapons. At least they've been pretty special for me as of late. Some of these I've been wearing recently. Some of these are personal favorites. And some of these are kind of under the radar and don't get any love. And they're actually quite good. And they're all really good for the current spring weather. So let's talk about them. Stay tuned. This first one's super versatile, everyday wear, Swiss Army knife kind of stuff. It is Bulgari Man Wood Essence. This stuff you can just grab and go. It's ideal for the springtime, but it works in all the other seasons. Fresh green, woodsy, a little touch of citrus early on. Kind of blue in many ways, even though the color scheme isn't that. In some ways it is. Woodsy aromatic with a nice fresh green tone is the gist of it. Smells great, performs pretty well, not a monster performer, but in my experience, above average, like six to eight hour range of longevity. This is good stuff. It doesn't get the kind of love it needs to get. It deserves to get. It's not gonna like wow you with this spectacularly unique, never before smelled aroma, but where it can wow you is just how easy going and enjoyable the wearing experience can be and just how many you know, outfits dressed up, dressed down throughout the season, it will just work for. That's Bulgari Man Wood Essence. This one's got a muted sweetness when you compare it to the rest of the line. It still has that core DNA sweetness, but toned down. There's some citrus freshness, a lot of woodiness to this fragrance. One Million Royal from Paco Rabanne. This is a great fragrance if you give it an opportunity. Now, in the same release year of 2023, this came out early in the year. Later in the year, we got One Million Golden Oud, which is incredible if you like spicy, woodsy, leathery type of fragrances with a touch of that One Million sweetness. Whereas here, it's kind of like the, the warmer weather, if you will, take on One Million. In some ways, better suited for the springtime than the Parfum, whereas the Parfum, I kind of like in the warm. Heather. I'm not going to sit here and act like I don't, but this one, like I said, for those of you that weren't fans of the heavy sweetness that comes with One Million, you might want to look into this one, because again, it's still there. I'm not saying it's gone. It's not omitted. It's just muted. It's lighter. You get more citrus and woods here, a little bit of freshness, a resinous, ambery tone without warming the fragrance up too much, and it performs really well as per usual in this line, in this Paco Rabanne's one million royal. Now, at the recording of this, I wore this two days ago. It was my first full wearing of this, and I'm head over heels in love with this. Highly versatile. So the thing about this one is that people relate it to Coach for Men and Invictus Platinum. This is Carolina Herrera's Bad Boy Cobalt. Beautiful gradient blue lightning bolt bottle. Now, here's the thing. Truffle, vanilla, plum, stuff like that. Sounds like it would be a super sweet fragrance, and early... It is. For any of you that smelled Invictus Platinum, the way I look at it is if you take that herbal green tone, that accord in the opening of Invictus Platinum and whatever's left, you bring that over here with a little bit of Coach for Men. That's Bad Boy Cobalt in the opening, then it starts to dry into more Coach for Men. It is a synthetic fragrance from start to finish, so if you don't like these chemically synthetic fragrances, you might want to look past this one, but if that doesn't bother you, if you're not walking around just sniffing your hand all day, and you're just enjoying the magic of your scent bubble and the wearing experience, because it is, it is great to me, you might be in for something special. This is a true blue. It starts off sweet, a little woodsy, a touch of spice, and then and very fresh still, and then it transitions into this fresh, woodsy, synthetic, true blue, almost aquatic-like, not a watery aquatic, but the level of freshness is there. It kind of gives you that ozonic feel more so than aquatic. I get great longevity out of this as well. I've seen people in my comment section say they don't get great performance. That's an individualized per basis kind of thing. I get great longevity. It's not a monster projector, but man, I'll tell you what, it gets a little bit of love, don't get me wrong, but for me, especially with the wife really digging this one, this is definitely a secret weapon for the spring. Carolina Herrera, Bad Boy Cobalt. As I sit here and record this video, it's what I'm wearing currently. Another one wife's a big fan of. She loves all the fragrances in this line. The Enhanced Green Spicy Rosemary Note. 
is what makes this such a darling for springtime. We're talking about Giorgio Armani's Aqua de Jo Parfum. Last year's release, this did not get the kind of love I thought it would get and the kind of love that I gave it because it replaced Profumo, the all-time great among designers. A lot of people's favorite, goaded, Mount Rushmore, king of the hill when it comes to this DNA. I agree, Profumo is the best they've ever done. Ascenza is a close second, but... This smells like a fresh reformulation of Profumo. I actually like this quite a bit. This is better in the warmer weather. Spring, summer, this works even better than Profumo to me because Profumo's heavier, a lot more incense, a bit more patchouli, whereas this is more aquatic versus Profumo. And the rosemary's heightened. You get a lot of fresh green, the cooking spice smell. It's fantastic. Performs great, lingers, lasts a long time. It's well-rounded. I think it's a great addition to the line. I think if this is what's replacing the King of the Hill, look, is it as good? No. Is it good enough? Yeah, I think it's pretty damn good. Don't knock this one before you try it. Get this one on skin because not enough people are giving it a shot. It's definitely shh, hush, hush, secret weapon kind of stuff right now. I'm just telling you. I'm not telling anybody else. I'm just telling you. Aqua de Gel Parfum. I don't know how much of a secret this one is at this point, but I really wanted to talk about it. It's been a little bit. I plan on wearing it this upcoming week. It just smells so good. Under 20 bucks, I still think it's one of the best fragrances money can buy. It's from Latafa, Kate Alfasan. Oh man, juicy, ripe, sweet pineapple. Spicy saffron, dense woods. It's that simple. There's other notes, but that's what I get. It's that simple. Average to above average, six, seven hour range, longevity. Not crazy loud, but pronounced. Early on, pretty strong fragrance. Good stuff for the money. People kind of relate it to a bit of Aventus meets a bit of Baccarat Rouge 540, almost like a hybrid-like fragrance. I see where they're coming from, but I think it's more so its, its own fragrance with elements of those. That's why, you know, it's undeniable. You will get reminders of those fragrances, but it's still kind of its own thing. This is good stuff. Latafa created something special for the money, in my opinion. This Most of the time, you can find it between $15 and $20 US. This is a, not a bold blind buy. Now look, there's always a risk if you're going to blind buy, but I mean, for any of you that smoke cigarettes, you spend, that's two packs of cigarettes buying this fragrance. Think about that. That's a meal at Chipotle. My meal is $14.48 after tax, and I don't get guacamole and sour cream and a drink and all that. That's literally just having double chicken is what increases the price of my bowl. Okay, so that's how cheap this fragrance actually is, and it punches well above its price point. Again, probably the least secret of the weapons in this video, because it's had its share of hype in the past, but man, it's still great for the money for sure. I mean, even take the money out of it. It's a great fragrance. Latafa's Kate Alfasan. Now here's a very unique niche fragrance. It was released last year. It was one of my favorite releases of the year. My overall favorite niche release. This is from Wilhelm Parfumery. This is Faces of Francis. Faces of Francis is an oddball, but in a good way. This is a strange fragrance. So it's metallic. It's full of aldehydes. Bright aldehydes, metallic, and warm spicy at the opening. So aldehydes and saffron star in this opening. The saffron then transitions with a creamy pistachio. This grilled pistachio note gives a little bit of this creamy pistachio feel to it. And you have things like cypriol and oud that give this slightly earthy, woodsy element. No real funk to this oud. A little bit of a green feel. But that saffron still hangs out and keeps it slightly spiced and a little bit metallic. Cool metallic at the same time. This is an interesting blend that really captivated me the first time I smelled it. And because it's a niche offering, it's not wildly popular. Those that are in the know, no. And I'm trying to get you in the know if you didn't know. Worth a sample. Unique fragrance, can be worn every day, great in the springtime. This is special, at least in my opinion. It is special. Performance is fantastic as well. From Wilhelm Parfumery, this is Faces of Francis. Now, even though the new release in this line is actually fantastic it kind of builds upon this DNA if I'm picking one for spring though I think the green elements with the citrus and the blonde leather accord make 
bright leather from Ferragamo just stand out for the springtime. This is such a great offering. The color of this bottle, this beige color, blonde leather color, if you will, beige leather, it smells appropriate. Like they created this accord. It smells great. It always reminds me. I always go to this descriptor because I used to sell Mercedes for several years. And the upgraded Napa leather, the Italian leather upgrade in the S class and in the E classes as well, that Italian leather smell, the beige color in general, the beige package. Man, a pearl white S550, well, they're S560 now, but a pearl white S class with beige leather, Napa leather, that's, man, that's this in a bottle. Luxury. Doesn't smell overly synthetic to me. It's fresh, yet has a little bit of a creamy tone. Supple, luxurious, worn leather. It's great. It's that simple. It's not super spicy, but there is a touch of some fresh spice, rosemary, things like that are in here. Uh, just a beautiful fragrance that is an average to above average performer, kind of six, seven hour range in longevity. Not winning any, you know, winning any awards and breaking any records in longevity, but also not a weak fragrance that's on the more unique side. I haven't smelled anything else like it. Definitely a secret weapon for spring because it does not get the limelight. It's Ferragamo's Bright Leather. Now with this one, I gotta give some credit to a profile here on YouTube called MG. Shout out to MG. He was on me for like two years about trying this fragrance. This is not a new fragrance. But anybody that likes Mont Blanc Starwalker, if you want that in its ultimate form, let's call it Golden Frieza because and some of you Dragon Ball fans are going to say, oh, but Super 2, we got Black Frieza. That's not, a, that's not out, that's the manga, okay? I haven't seen the animated series for that yet. So we're sticking with Golden Frieza. This is the Golden Frieza of Star Walker. It's Bulgari Por Om. What do I mean by that? So it does remind me of the citrus and green elements of Mont Blanc Star Walker, but this has more complexity. It's slightly better quality, even though it's a synthetic fragrance. It lasts a lot longer. This is another one that falls in that six to eight hour range. It's not super expensive. I paid around 50 bucks for this 50 ml. And it's just great. It's fresh green, citrus, musky, clean. Very masculine, but very spring appropriate because there's loads of fresh green smell that you get. It is so good. I think it's the best of the bunch. They have a fourth version of this fragrance coming out, the new Eau de Parfum Flanker that I haven't tried yet, that I will get this year. But the Extreme and Soir are both great fragrances in their own right, but the original DNA is the best of the bunch in my opinion. I think if you're gonna go after one, you should definitely go after the original. It's also the easiest to find from what I see. And like I said before, if you've ever been a fan of Mont Blanc Star Walker and want a better version that performs better, spend a little bit more money. Here's your sign for your secret weapon. It's Bulgari Porum. Now this is such an impressive release from 2023. There's another one I can't take credit for. Joel's Matrix here on YouTube recommended this one to me in a live stream where I was taking suggestions from viewers on what I should buy. We were doing some online shopping in a live stream. And if I would have got this before I did my 10 best designers of 2023 list, it would have been in there. It is Chopard's Cedar Malachi. This is a magnificent fragrance, green and gold, in the realm of polo green, but without that tobacco. Let's go incense, juniper type aromatics, cedar, Virginia cedar, cypress, cedar leaf, I believe is in here as well. Point being, it's very, not overly sharp cedar, but cedar dominant, fresh green, bright and aromatic, meets a nice touch of incense smokiness. It adds that, adds that mysterious darker element to an overall fresh green woodsy dominant fragrance that's decent quality, great performance, relatively affordable. It's around 70 bucks from discounters online. It's not crazy expensive, but it's not cheap either. This is under the radar. This is a true secret weapon for men in the spring, in my opinion. I would encourage you greatly to get your nose on this one. If anything about that sounded good to you, because... It's even better than I'm saying it is. At least, that's what I think. Chopard, Cedar Malachi. And for the finale, last but not least, the one that is going to be split. There's going to be some people that are going to be, I am so glad you gave that some love. I never understood the hate it got. And then there's going to be people, oh, so overrated, weak, sauce, bro, and blah, 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 blah. It's going to be split. But, Spice Bomb Night Vision, the Eau de Toilette. Yes, yes, yes. 
We're talking about that one. The most polarizing and underappreciated Spice Bomb flanker to ever release. This is not bad. It's actually quite good. Because it has a little bit of that Invictus type opening, which so many other fragrances have. It kind of got poo-pooed on a little bit when it first came out. I want to say it came out 2019, 2018, something like that. Don't get me wrong, the Eau de Parfum is a superior fragrance, but it's a heavier fragrance. Thick and creamy. This performs above average. Six to eight hour range longevity. It's a little sweet. Fresh. Dries down nice and spicy. Ties right on into that Spice Bomb DNA. Woodsy and spicy. Fiery hot while still be adding a bunch of freshness. Great in the springtime. It's a great fragrance. I've always thought that. I stand on that. I stand by it, behind it, next to it. That statement is true to me. Don't knock this one before you try it. Don't just take someone's opinion, including what you're hearing right here and now from me. Try this one for yourself before you write it off because you might have been missing out this whole time with what could be your favorite fragrance ever. No guarantees. You never know. If you don't get it on skin and try it. And for a lot of you, all it takes is for somebody that whose opinion you value to tell you how good you smell. It's that simple for some folks. All it takes is a compliment to be, oh, this is a great fragrance. Then let you get two or three compliments in one day. Oh my God, I love this fragrance. It's so good, bro. You need to try this fragrance. Because those compliments will sway your opinion. Start making you feel good when people go telling you you smell good, right? Wear this. You'll be surprised. Try it out. It's more of a secret weapon than it gets get it gets credit for. Got twisted on my words. Because it just upsets me that it gets no love. Spice Bomb Night Vision. Eau de Toilette. Well, that's my 10. And until next time, do me a real quick favor. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. So I do appreciate all the feedback and I love hearing from you guys. You tried any of this stuff? You familiar with any of it? I'll try to have links to everything down below if you're interested in checking any of it out. Sample when available. But, like I said, I'll have some links if you're interested. And until next time, I will say if you get your hands on any of the tin that I discussed in this video, and you give them a spray now, you might end up thanking me later. Have a good one, guys.